he gets low blowed. Herb Dean wants to step in for Pereira, but Pereira's like, hold on, Herb, you can come in a second. I'm about to murk this guy. Hunting his prey. And he immediately KOs Jamal Hill with one signature left hook. That is the most powerful punch I've ever seen in the sport. The aura on Alex Pereira is insane. And even when he was walking out there, he looked like he was full of confidence. And it turned out to be his easiest fight in the UFC. Maybe there is something to that power cube of him hitting harder than Francis Ngannou because when he touches people with that punch, it's like a light switch. They turn off. The only guy that was able to take it somehow was Bruno Silva, but after that fight, Bruno Silva was never the same again. And after seeing this, it's understandable why. Jamal Hill has a great chin. He's ate some big shots by Glover Teixeira, Thiago Santos. These guys hit really hard. And Alex Pereira makes them look like they're throwing pillows. And the crazy thing about it is, the left hook he hit Jamal Hill with wasn't even full power at all. And he hit him with the pinky knuckle, the weakest part of the fist, and still sent his eyes back rolling behind his head. And Pereira did not throw a traditional left hook. It was like a hybrid shovel hook into a screw punch. He brought it down from his hip, upward at Jamal Hill's head, hits it with the pinky knuckles, almost like an uppercut fashion, and twists his fist directly to the right side after. It's almost like a, a swooping upward and right motion. And Pereira countered almost everything Hill did in the fight. Hill immediately took the southpaw stance. He was trying to take the outside foot. He was moving to his right side. And Alex Pereira was cutting him off with the lead left kick beautifully. Like intelligent work by Pereira. And just like I mentioned in my breakdown, he was establishing pressure with those body jabs. He is so good at that. And one big exchange between the two was all it took because Hill always drops that right hand when he's throwing his left. It's lacking. There's some defensive holes there that allows Alex Pereira to hit him with the left hook. And he slipped on the outside of Jamal Hill's left straight. And the reason why he was able to do that is because Hill telegraphed the punch. As I talked about in that breakdown, when he throws his punches, oftentimes you're able to see it before he throws it. And Pereira intelligently knows he's fighting an opposite stance fighter, which is going to open up each other's power hand. But he wasn't looking for his power hand. He was looking for the left hook. Jamal Hill's best attack from Southpaw is that left straight. And Pereira absolutely knew it. If he was going to dodge his head a certain way, it's going to be to his right. That's going to get his head on the outside of Jamal Hill's left straight. Hill's right hand is going to come down as he usually does when he throws punches. And there it is, right over the shoulder, left hook touches him. I don't even want to say cracked him because that's not a crack to Pereira. Pereira could throw that way harder and way more precisely, but he didn't need to. That's how powerful he is. He just needs to touch you with the left hook. And there's not many light heavyweights in history that has that kind of quality. And the game plan was very simple for Pereira. He constantly had that left hand extended hand fighting with the lead hand of Jamal Hill because they're opposite stances, right? So when Pereira's doing this, he's able to dictate distance the entire time. He would do this idly in the neutral position where both fighters are not really advancing on each other. And this would make it hard for Jamal Hill to find an opening for his punches. That's why he didn't see Hill land too much. And the only time he actually landed to the head was when Pereira went for that risky body kick. That was the only time. And Hill was trying to find openings, right? He was trying to even force some of them because Pereira wasn't giving him much. Besides the light kicks and the body jab, those are quite safe techniques compared to what Pereira can throw. And that's not what Jamal Hill wanted to see. He wanted more openings out of Pereira. So he was taking the outside foot and trying to line up the left hand. But that wasn't even getting close. I mean, they weren't even near to land on Alex Pereira. The reason is because when he takes the outside foot, Pereira knows what he's lining it up for. He knows he's going to throw the left straight. And also Hill flares out that left elbow wide. They're extending that wing, you know, their elbow to the side. Very easy to tell they're going to throw the left straight from there. And Pereira is able to back away from it very easily. He did this a couple times throughout the fight. And he would overextend when he throws it. Hopping with both feet after missing the punch. And Pereira could have capitalized, but he's still making reads. Or another time where Pereira is constantly hand trapping, hand fighting with Jamal Hill's lead hand. Hill throws a jab, which gets easily blocked. Then he tries to extend and a huge right hook, very wide right hook over the arm and just doesn't even get close. It's because Pereira is dictating the distance between them two very well and he's defending himself behind that lead hand at all times. That's all he's got to do, post with the lead and just move around. And it would even help him when he missed a leg kick because when he misses a leg kick, he's going to get off balance and that would give an opening to Hill to fire one of his long range punches. But Pereira would extend that lead hand again, almost like a lance, you know, like a pull between them two and Jamal Hill can't find his way in on the center line, merely because of that. So it made everything safe for Pereira. I mean, this guy just defeated his fifth UFC champion. He's already Hall of Fame worthy. He's already one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time. He defeated Jan Blachowicz, Yir Prochaska, and Jamal Hill back to back to back. Three champions in a row. And he beat Israel Adesanya middleweight. And he beat Sean Strickland, another middleweight champion. Five wins. His last five wins are against champions. How many fighters in history can say that? He's a very special fighter. And also credit to Jamal Hill. 
Hill's a very good fighter. He's a really good puncher. He's quite precise. He understands where to place his punches. He was throwing out the front kick like I was mentioning in his breakdown of how he could beat Pereira. He was taking the outside foot. He was trying all he could there. And it was working originally. But it all was pretty much just a plan for Pereira to find that shot. And do you know what the crazy thing about this is? Pereira has been talking about making another title defense in a month after. And the way this played out, it's perfect for him. He should be able to fight in May now. Why not give him the opportunity to defend his title yet again at UFC 301 next month against Magomed Ankalaev? Ankalaev seems to be ready. He just had an interview. He wants to fight the winner. Burr's coming off a very quick knockout. Hopefully there's no injuries going into the fight for him. And to see him defend his title yet again, if he beats Magomed Ankalaev next month, Alex Burr has to go down as one of the greatest fighters of all time. He's already the greatest combat sports athlete in my opinion. But if he goes and does this extraordinary feat against the guy who's supposed to have the worst style for him. Magum and Uncle Live is supposed to be the most dangerous fight for Alex Pereira because of that wrestling factor. He's one of the best wrestlers there. He should be the guy that takes Pereira to the ground and dominates him. But what if he doesn't? What if Pereira chins him from a two-way glory kickboxing world champion? The guy who defeated Israel Adesanya twice in kickboxing. The man who defeated Simon Marcus twice. The man who defeated U3 and avenged his loss. Defeated Artem Vakitov. Came to the UFC. Defeated Sean Strickland, Israel Adesanya, Jan Blachowicz, Yuri Prohaska, Jamal Hill. Two-way world champion. And to think he goes and beats Magomed Ankalaev in a month turnaround? His most dangerous stylistic matchup in a record-breaking title defense? How is he not one of the greatest fighters of all time at that point? Alex Burr coming to the UFC when he did had to have been one of the greatest moves in UFC history. He was a guy that Adesanya was talking about, you know, Burr is just a guy in the bar that beat me once and he's got nothing. I'm the one winning titles on the world stage and he's just sitting around. Can you imagine if Adesanya never lit that fire under Pereira? We never would have saw any of these wins. We never would have saw this legendary MMA career. I'm so grateful that I've been able to watch this guy live and we might have a new prediction thumbnail now. Insane performance by Alex Pereira and I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to give this a like make sure to subscribe hit the bell for notifications leave in the comments below your thoughts of the fight and i'll see you guys in the next video